Welcome back to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. Have you realized that ever since William Ruto found a new alliance with uh, Raila, he is behaving with a lot of impunity? When the four cabinet secretaries from the ODM were appointed, that is Ali Hassan Joho, Wycliffe Ambetsa Oparanya, John Mbadi, and uh, Opiwa Ndai, the country was in a frenzy. They, everyone was, uh, from where those uh, politicians are coming from, they were over the moon with joy. And I'm even shocked that they are telling us no manda mano. And William Ruto is behaving in a manner like asking utadu. You know, I'm reading a headline of uh, some of the print media and I can't believe it. Relief for first and second lady staff as parliament rejects budget cuts. In essence, let me just uh, give you, uh, before we start discussing this, that the Ndidi Nyoro led budget and appropriations committee has poked holes into the treasury's plans to fold up the offices of the first and second lady despite mounting pressure to cut costs. This is, this in essence, would extend the existence of those offices which Kenyans have demanded be disbanded. In a nutshell, the Ndindi Nyoro led committee is saying that despite William Ruto coming out and abolishing the office of the first, second, and the third lady, they are saying they are not going to be budget cuts. Those offices must remain and the budget allocation must be maintained. In fact, they might even increase the, bar, the, the money that is going into those offices. And the reason why I'm saying that William Ruto is behaving with a kind of impunity is I want us to listen to him when the Gen Z started this pressure and they were on the streets and you listen to this speech and how William Ruto articulated the austerity measures that he wanted to undertake and the reasons why he had to abolish these offices and the money that were going into those offices. After a lot of pressure, people like Boni Halwale had cautioned that these offices were gobbling a lot of money. And I want us to listen to, listen to William Ruto. Functions will be integrated into the respective line ministries. Staff currently employed by the affected corporations will be transferred to ministries and other state agencies within government. The decision to fill the position of, cabinet, uh, uh, of chief administrative secretaries is hereby suspended. The number of advisors in government shall be reduced by 50% within the public service with immediate effect. Budget lines providing for the operations of the office of the First Lady, the spouse of the Deputy President, and the Prime Cabinet Secretary will be removed. Similarly, the budget, the budget provisions for confidential budgets in various executive offices, including my own office, have been removed and the budget for renovations across government reduced by 50%. You know, this was happening after the Finance Bill 2024 was coerced on us. Members of Parliament passed it and they were chest thumping. People like Kimani Chungwa, the majority leader, was telling us, I led the MPs to pass this and there's nothing you can do. And people were enraged and were very angered that we cannot be electing members of parliament. They are paid. Their offices are maintained by taxpayers' money. Yet they want to believe like they they want to behave like they're first class Kenyans, and we are children of a lesser God. So they were being greeted. Those who voted yes were being greeted. Their houses were being touched. They were denied a chance even to address Gen Zs in the churches. Things were running very smoothly and they were about to succeed. They were afraid. Some of them had even left their, their shags, their rural homes. All of them, had, of them had come to the city. 
for fear of being greeted. If you look at, there's a list going on here that contains staff that were working under First Lady's office. And I'm looking at it, I can't believe it. About 28 staff. And I'm wondering, why? What, what in, in, in God's name would, would uh, a First Lady's office be doing with 28 staff, members of staff? 28. And they're being paid. This one, I think, is excluding the prayer band. Those who are, being, who are praying and they are paid. Shockingly, as this list is going on, uh, viral, if you look at number 22, there is a name, Mrs. Stephanie Ruto. And people are trying to connect that Stephanie Ruto is Ruto's daughter. So they are saying that apart from William Ruto being the president of Kenya, his office paid heavily, maintained by taxpayers' money, the first lady has employed, including her daughter, and they are gobbling money. William Ruto looked feeble as he read the austerity measures and he told us that he had abolished this office. Now, the Dindinyoro office is bringing back this office and I will, I will tell you this, this is not Dindinyoro. This is William Ruto after securing the support of the ODM, after securing the support of Raila Bolodinga. And he can now behave with a lot of impunity. He told us that he was he was uh, dissolving the cabinet. Today, Churchill is back. Dwale is back. Soipan is back. We have uh, Murkomen is back. I mean, they are back. It is like these people are on holiday. And do you know why they are back? Because... Raila has given the four cabinet secretaries, he has secured the, the, the support of Raila. And he knows that in parliament, he has added to his advantage more members of parliament. William Ruto was playing around with us. Now the office of the first lady and the second lady are, give, are going to be back and they're going to be given more money. Nothing has changed. If anything has changed, it has changed for the worse. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. Kenyans have been left on their own. And whether you want to tell me that someone wanted to overturn Ruto's government and that's why Raila has come in, that is upon them. Kenyans must rise up. We cannot let or leave our fate in the hands of a few politicians who only think about themselves. I will repeat this. Raila, Ruto, Mdavadi, Wetangula, Kalonzo, Jeremiah, Kioni, Uhuru, Kenyatta, what? All those people belong to the same basket. And I will repeat it for you. We only have the rich and the poor. They have and they have not. So we cannot let the fate and the future of our, of, of our nation in the hands of a few people. And I feel that the call for the revolution must go on. People must place checks and balances because we no longer have an opposition. Gen Z's must come out with their rallying call to ensure that we go back to factory settings. You know, I must say this though. Gen Z's must be very careful of those who want to infiltrate their demonstrations. So that we don't have goons inside. We don't have people, for example, like we had that, uh, I don't know, Gashagwa, I don't know, some people from Mount Kenya infiltrated that they wanted that after Ruto goes, then Gashagwa comes in. I think the second wave of protest should be the entire government. If you want Ruto out, we must make it very clear that we want the entire government to go. We must pile pressure so that we don't have, because what we have now come out with is that corruption is going to be perpetuated. No one is going to criticize when corruption and wastage continues. Victims who lost their lives are not going to be compensated. There is no justice. The trigger-happy policemen who are killing people are going to walk scot-free. We might even see another wave of kidnappings and torture. Despite the fact that Ruto had said that he needs a, uh, his direct uh, unconditional re release of those who are 
abducted those who were apprehended. But he did say that, and of course he also was saying that the policemen will carry their own cross. I don't think so. These people were working on his behalf. Can you imagine that with this staff, I don't know how many are now working for the second lady and how many are in Ule uh, Bibi Wamdavadi. I don't know. And this is where our money goes. And people made a lot of noise that we were about to read the canon. And then we are now going back. Please don't tell me that Raila has betrayed you. What I want to say is that we need to move on as a nation. We need to continue with the fight because Aluta continua. The quest for justice, quest for the democratic space to be expanded, quest for change, to eradicate the status quo, people must rise up and you know that it is a rough road. Raila is not the only politician. Let us forget about them and move on as a nation. We know that the person with the mantle is William Ruto. Let us demand accountability from him. This is very sad and I think Kenyans must understand that these politicians are the same. The forest is the same. Because it was this way during Moi, during Kibaki it was the same, during Guru, during... We need fresh blood to sit at the helm. Someone who can understand the people, not someone telling us that he's a hustler, yet he's not. Gen Z's must not allow this, Kenyans must not allow this, because that is not Didi Nyoro speaking, but that is William Samuel Ruto. Dealing with us with impunity, Utadu, they have the numbers, they have the police, they have everything. But the power of the people, history has shown, is mightier than the power of the bullet. Especially when God rises up to be with them.